Speaking of Chris Jones, uh, before we get to first in football, uh, this was a pretty cool, organic moment. I love watching millionaires uh, celebrate making more money than any of us will ever see in our lives. Chris Jones gets the Michael Strahan sack right there. <laughs> and because of that sack, got like a million dollar bonus. Yeah. Uh, so if you remember how the season started, holding out for more money, gets the contract, has incentives in the contract, and that's a bunch of guys going, we go to Sizzler. We go to Sizzler. <laughs> this yeah. dude's got cash coming his way. Now, Greg, I'll start with you. Were you having a spot like that where you knew a guy on the Packers or Vikings or Dolphins had a big incentive and got it? And if so, did he share the wealth? Um, No, not on my team. But we were uh, playing against the Calvin Johnson 0-16 team where he needed – 200 and something odd yards to right. make all this. And he got it. <laughs> and I was on the opposite sideline secretively rooting for him. Like, don't get it, <laughs> All right. Fair, how about you, Willie? Did you ever experience that? No. Uh, no, there was one time I think Heinz Ward needed a certain amount of catches, and they kept throwing him bubble screens. And so, uh, <laughs> he got it. <laughs> yeah, but it's great that the team's aware of it. I remember, yeah. of course, you remember Brady's last year in Tampa with Gronk. He needed one more catch yep. for a million dollars and Brady was supposed to come out of the game and he told Todd Bowles no no I'm going back in I gotta get crushed <laughs> so I, funny, look, I know these guys already make a lot of money you guys were blessed to make more money than the average person makes based on your God-given and hard work skill right but when you do it and there's an organic celebration like that. It was pretty cool to there's watch. There's another guy you got to celebrate, Jadavion Clowney. Yeah. He got his bonus, too, yep. uh, getting a sack against the Steelers. So, everybody's eating, man. It's good when you get that free money. Yeah, but, you, but if, if the guys know about it and they celebrate it, you got to take care of dinner or something. Get, yes. I think it's harder to get it on defense than all. I was about to say, because yeah, you, can, you can do bubble you screens. You can, yeah, you you can scheme, work it into an offense. Defense, you got to work for it. And, and, and to that it. point, I think it's more impressive when the guys on defense get it. Oh, yeah. Everybody has to be involved in right. it, even the defensive coordinator to mm. some extent. Well, you have my word. If and when I get my bonus oh, here, okay. oh. I'm getting everybody a slice of pizza. Oh, oh. That's right. No, no, no. Just cheese. You haven't seen my bonus structure. Can't get pepperoni, but cheese. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> there will be cheese on the pizza. Wow. If you just want the cheese and not the carbs, I'll hook you up too. You'll be good. I'm a All right. Brother. Let's go now to first in football. Oh. Craig, what happened to the Jags? Rocky Dennis is what happened to the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence isn't a top 10 quarterback. Wow. And despite the fact that he thinks he is and you nine fans down in Duval County think he is, he proved yet again he's not. Look, this is a team that started off 8-3. and three this year and had the inside track early for what might have been the number one seed. Forget about just winning the division, the number one seed. And from eight and three, I don't think they won another game. No. Like they lost out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one and five over the last six uh, you know, to end the season. It, would, it was virtually, from a mathematical standpoint, impossible for the Jaguars not to get in, even as a wild card team. And you got to give them credit. They figured, they, it out. they figured it out. And, they figured it out. And, and the problem with that now is now if I'm one of those nine Jaguar fans who is cursing out me and Willie back in October for telling you that you were paper tigers, the reality now is you have a question mark. Uh, Doug Peterson is now a question mark. Trevor Lawrence, now a question mark. And the future of that franchise is now a question mark. No question. Look, this is a quarterback in Trevor Lawrence that after last season, when they got on that hot streak and they went into the playoffs and he threw those first half interceptions and they were down 27, they fought back to get a playoff yep. win. We said this year... Oh, this team is going to be one of the best in the AFC. Greg, they talked about throwing 5,000 yards Absolutely. this year. And yeah. let alone, he's going to be one of the top quarterbacks in the yep. National Football League. You add Calvin Ridley. We expected them to be a more explosive offense, yep. a more effective offense. But when they played elite caliber talent in teams, they were a no-show. And he was more importantly the no-show. These are his numbers from last year to this year. And I know everybody's going to be like, well, they're pretty comparable. But when you look at the interceptions, when you are, when you are a quarterback – or any type of player in this league who has had success, the, the hardest thing for you to do is to build on that success sure, when sure. now it's expected. Yeah. It was expected for the Jacksonville Jaguars to win that division and for Trevor Lawrence to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and he did not deliver.
deliver. That's why there's a question mark. Yeah, there. and I, I will say this. There's a segment of fans out in Jacksonville who do watch this show and love what we do, and we appreciate you guys, who knew back in October that me and Willie were right. Yep. And I want to hand it to this one particular Jaguar fan who went on to social yeah. media. Yeah. Yeah. Card show, you yeah. were right about my Jags all year long. Yeah. And the internet did my boy dirty. Yeah, that's Rocky Dennis, in case you didn't know. Uh, the movie Mask with Sharon and um, Eric Stoltz. Uh, but, yeah, it's bad. Craig, I told you, when you mess with the terrible towel, it will come back to haunt you. Uh, that's what people have to understand. You touch the towel, that's your ass. And that's what happened to the Jacksonville. <laughs> they got the ass to by Tennessee Titans. You are 100% right. This is a step backwards for the organization. No doubt about it. This, they had the most talented roster in all of the division. Before we knew about CJ Stout, they had the best quarterback in the division. Yep. Right? We thought the Jacksonville Jaguars were going to be them. We were yeah. actually talking about, man, if they get into the AFC Championship, Ooh. watch out. Because of the takeaways from this defense and what Trevor Lawrence was that. Poo-poo. It's all BS, man. The bottom line is the towel came and bit you in the ass. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> and we thank you because the loss put the Steelers in. Remember so again, happy. the 8-3, eight 8-3 and three, eight eight and and three. Three Jacksonville Jaguars missed out on the playoffs. The last time our team was 8-3 and three and missed out on the playoffs – were, of course, the New York Jets with Brett Favre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, they were 8-3 right. when yeah. he hurt his shoulder, he his and they right. did not make yeah. the playoffs. But at least they have that to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's true. We can always just blame Brett Favre. <laughs> <laughs> he had a picture of a small penis. Right. So, right. you know, we could kind of blame it on that. Jacoby, it's, it's, Jacoby, it's a game of inches. Yeah. Like, what do you Centimeters. Yeah. Like, you know, they're not out there. We'll go second down. Second down. It's factual. Don't go for the great. Time for second and four. You know what? Do the second down. I'm having a good time. Craig, rookie quarterback, rookie head coach. Heading into the playoffs, how do you feel about the Texans? Well, first off, uh, I feel terrible for the Colts, and I'm tr- I'm saying to myself, why is Jonathan Taylor not on the Stumped field out. after a timeout on a fourth and one play when all you've done is run Jonathan Taylor, yep. and then you call a pass play? Not you a great throw. An injury to be on that field. Not a great throw, but a throw a pro makes catch in that throw. spot. Catch you got to make the catch there, at least uh, you know keep the drive alive and maybe win that game. I just have to say that because I'm still trying to figure out why Jonathan Taylor is not on the field. You called timeout. He may have been tired, but you called timeout. He's, He's got to be on the field. All right, that aside. Uh, look, the Texans are just a great story, right, for a dysfunctional franchise that foobarred, for my money, the entire Deshaun Watson mess until the Browns gave up all those picks, obviously, to get him. You've got a franchise quarterback. You've got a dude who, uh, without Tank Dell, became overnight for a lot of America uh, the best wide receiver yes, in all of football and a dominant force in their passing game. First play of the game, bang, 75 yards, touchdown right out of the gate. Uh, the Texans are interesting because they're a really good defensive team. They're very well coached. You've got a quarterback with a very short memory mm-hmm. who overcomes mistakes and plays well in big spots, and you've got a game-breaking wide receiver. Now, their tight end is out. Tank Dell is out. Yeah, yeah. They are banged up big time, but you can't count them out because they've got that. It's almost like I, I go back to being a kid where, you know, the kid's too dumb to know how good he is. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying they're dumb. Don't take it the mm-hmm. wrong way. But it's so new for them. And everyone's going through this for the first time on that roster where teams like that are scary. Yeah, you're 100% right. You don't know what you don't know. Right. Bottom line. And when you talk about what CJ Shaw doesn't know, he doesn't know he's not supposed to be here right now because he's been a winner since he's been in Ohio State. So he's like, hey, I'm just moving it on to the NFL. And when you have D'Amico Ryans and you have this outfit led by him, me and Greg were talking about it behind the curtain, the fact that he's made no-name receiver stars right now, the fact that you know who Nico Collins is and you know who Tank Dell is and you know who's yep. on and on is, is a Schultz, obviously Schultz was with the Cowboys. But overall, the fact that you know these his, these role players, it makes it's, it's a testament to where he's at. It really, you talking about his rookie year? Now, this is a guy in his third year, Craig. Rookie it, year. It's one of the great stories in, in in NFL today, and let's keep it for what it is. It's a great story, yeah. and here's a franchise with zero expectations because it's year one of a rookie quarterback, and that's the year where the the game's too fast, mm-hmm. and the kids got to figure out how to be an NFL player, and all the things that comes with that. And now they play Cleveland Browns team. And while they're a great story in their own right, their offense is not going to light the world on fire. 
but you're going up against one of, if not the best defense in all of football, which is why this game, I think, is what, two and a half point, you know, spread in this game. But this game, to me, is going to be a one-score game in the fourth quarter, and I think we're going to love it. Yeah, we're definitely going to love it. And the thing about the Houston Texans that we have to realize is C.J. Stroud just flat out gives them a chance. I said this early in the season, outside of Patrick Mahomes, he, I, I don't know a quarterback that I would take. Obviously, a healthy Joe Burrow, but for me, I don't know a quarterback that's better than him playing in this game that I would want with the ball in their hands going into the postseason that gives my team a chance to win a game. That is why this team is going to have a chance. It yeah. doesn't matter what their defense does, who they have on the perimeter, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. When you have a difference maker under center yep. that has the confidence and the belief that C.J. Stroud is playing with, you have a chance. And yeah, I, go ahead. I was saying that I want to uh, piggyback on Greg. He's 100% right. When you talk about confidence, poise, and decision-making, for a kid this young to do it all and have the whole off, like, there was so much talked about Aaron Rodgers having the keys to the offense, right? How you get dink and dunk and control everything. He's doing that right now as a rookie, right? Like, there's no hold back with it. It's him. also why I always say on this show, you know, it doesn't matter how you win. Like, sometimes we want to, you know, nitpick wins. Well, you didn't do this well, you didn't do that mm -hmm. well. Look, if uh, a backup running back for the Colts catches a pass, that drive may end in a touchdown, yep. and all of a sudden you're not in the playoffs. Yep. Sure. Right? And the Indianapolis Colts win the division, and you're talking about what could have been. No one's going to remember any of that stuff. All we're going to talk about is the great success now that the Texans had oh, yeah. with D'Amico Ryans as coach, with obviously C.J. Stroud. And here's the interesting thing again. There's a lot of comparisons between a specific NFC game and this game in the playoffs. Ooh. The Texans are home underdogs. Yep, yep. The Cleveland Browns come in, take away, obviously, this weekend they didn't play anybody. Yeah. They come in one of the hottest teams in football with Joe Flacco under center, yeah. and they are now favorites on the road to beat the Houston Texans. Shocked, will you be shocked if Flacco throws some interceptions and then that the Houston defense steps up and see this Stroud gets a late game touchdown? Here's what I'll tell you. Like, I don't I know how anyone, including us sitting here, how you can have a real strong pick on this game. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how – like, if someone comes out and goes, my lock of the century, and eh, yeah. don't buy it because this is a coin flip, period, stop. If this was Bagels a lock game, you know who I'm going with. You know I'm – It's straight. not a I mean, Bagels and Lock just, game. It's and a Bagels way, and Locks game. I will buy you a Bagels. It just was Bagels, man. It just was Bagels. I'm just saying, the last time a, 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 a Flacco played the Texas, yeah. he put a whooping on him, right? <laughs> Amari Cooper had a, grand, a, a groundbreaking game. And I understand – Stroud didn't play. It was Case Keenum at quarterback. Oh, that, you, you, Thank you. you. I get that. You remember that. But old man Stop Flacco put on a show in Houston. It's, it's, funny. Funny. it's interesting to me that we've Same. now done 36 minutes on this show, and I haven't mentioned it, but you kind of just brought up something that happened on Friday. And I'm wondering why it's not in my show sheet right oh, here. Oh, what's up? Huh. Boy, bagels what's and that? locks, 21 straight wins. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Oh, okay. We'll get to it. I don't see it. Right, right now, we're on the third down, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are it. in the playoffs. They yeah. didn't look good doing it. Let's be no, honest. They they did. But Our they beat hard. the Panthers, and now they face the Eagles. Which team do you feel worse about heading into this one? The <laughs> Eagles or the Bucs? The Eagles. The Eagles. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a 500 team. That's what they are. That's what they've been all year. You got to love Baker May for that dude's a dog. Uh, playing on one leg, making plays. Yeah, nine points is all they needed. Their defense did a great job against Bryce Young and the woeful Carolina Panthers. I would always rather be at home, right? Sure. They're at home. You know, you get a full week to get that leg right. Uh, this is really the battle of who wants it least, yeah. right? Because yeah. whoever wins this game it ends right there. They're not advancing to the NFC Championship game. This is a one and done. Yeah, this is supposed to be a reset for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers after losing Brady, right? Brady leaves, and yep. you talk about their salary cap hell, and you got Baker Mayfield, that quarterback, and you got Todd Bowles on the hot seat. Everybody's like, all right, nobody's talking about the Bucs. But all through the season, they started to say, you know what? We believe, we believe, and here they are. I like the Bucs' offense, obviously, with Mike Evans. But listen, the bottom line is I have all the faith in the world the Eagles are going to turn this around. You can't. I, I'm Against telling the you. Bucks, I, but I'm you saying, haven't I'm seen any. But that, you're, to me, you're saying that more based on your distrust of Tampa than anything I think you, Philly is. They done. lost yeah. to the Saints at home. Okay. They've done nothing. They've so been then, in the middle of the road. Then if you think Philly's gonna win, yes. it's more because 
you don't like Tampa. Not because Philly's shown you anything. Yes. Because Philly's been terrible. Have you not believed in their run game? We've said time after time with DeAndre Swift. Even with Gainwell running the ball. Do we know if they even believe in their yeah, run game? Yeah, they yes. believe yes. it. They, it's got to commit to it. I, I feel strong that the Eagles are going to win this game. Yeah, One 100%. thing I noticed in this one is, is remember Baker Mayfield was red hot? Remember Lambeau when he put up all those numbers? This Look at this stat right here because it's pretty shocking. He did not complete a pass more than 10 That's yards down the field. That's your man, Craig. Look at your man. Yeah. Remember, yeah. 10 That's yards my guy. down the field. That's your guy. Did not complete a pass. That's what you go to the playoffs with. And this is and against the Panthers. The this See, is against the Panthers. Here's the difference between me and Greg and Jacoby and Willie. Okay. Did now they win see. the game, Greg? Thank you, Greg. They won the oh, game. They won. Against the, the Panthers. The Carolina Panthers. Oh, Are you oh, serious? Oh, that they, can't be they, your team. They, they did Wait a fumble. There was a fumble Thank right you. on the half-yard line. They won the game. He played How many wins does the Panthers have? One? They didn't limp into Two. the playoffs. They stumbled. They I mean, I see it. They, they pitched the a shutout in a game they had to have to win the division. I like Tampa. I'm all over them. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching the Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.